news that broke just when we were getting ready to come back out of our break. Senator Mitch McConnell um, is now pro-impeachment, saying this to the, in the New York Times. Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, has told associates he believes President Trump committed impeachable offenses and is pleased that Democrats are moving to impeach him, believing that it will make it easier to purge him from the party. That's according to people familiar with his thinking. Does that help you get some Republicans on board that Mitch McConnell thinks it's a good idea to purge Trump from the Republican Party? Shame on Mitch McConnell. What Mitch McConnell should do is call the Senate back to the Capitol to prepare to receive the articles of impeachment that we will send over. Uh, they should prepare for a speedy trial and absolutely excise this cancer uh, from our country, let alone a party. This isn't about a party. This isn't about politics. This is about protection of our Constitution, of our, our rule of law. Uh, this man is an infection, uh, deadly infection. Uh, and uh, Mitch McConnell and others, uh, shame on them. Congresswoman, do you feel like the vote um, on impeachment will be bipartisan? We have word that it will be. You saw overwhelming numbers of Democrats who are original co-sponsors. I'm one, too. Uh, and we have word of at least a, a, an important handful of Republicans. So the measure will definitely pass. But this is a moment. This is a reckoning for the Republican members of the House to say, where was I at this time in our history when our Capitol was attacked, when a, a riotous mob incited by the president incited by his lies and those around him who have lied for months and years, came in in search of assassinating the speaker, hanging the vice president, hunting down members of Congress. These folks need to figure out, do they believe in their sworn oath of office, if not resign? Do you um, think that the calls from Republicans outside of the chamber, Chris Christie said uh, that if insurrection isn't an impeachable offense, it's hard to name one that would be. Mitch McConnell saying that purging Trump from the party is appropriate now. Um, I'm, I'm in your camp. You know, where, where were you when he saw good people on both sides of Charlottesville and when he was telling the lie that would lead to its obvious conclusion, the rage that spilled into violence? But are these calls at this point better than nothing? Are they helpful or are they meaningless? Uh, they're weak, they're feckless, they're an attempt to uh, try to rebuild uh, a shattered, absolutely shattered set of reputations, but their reputations are destroyed, forever destroyed. Uh, uh, Franklin said it, its reputations are like pottery. Once you break it, it's hard to put it back together. Uh, so they're just weak uh, attempts at trying to um, restore themselves. Everything that they have done the lies that they promoted on behalf of this president that radicalized this group of people into attacking their own country, they are responsible for that. They should be held responsible for that. And I know Wednesday was um, a day so traumatic and shocking that everyone is still processing it. But if the, the mob didn't represent a grave enough threat, Republican members, many of them refused to wear masks. And now there is a proposal to have a fine um, for members that don't wear masks. Can you talk about, I mean, at some level, it's shocking that that's necessary, that leaders refuse to lead. But is this something at this point that's, that's a, um, a simple necessity to protect your members? Honest to God, could you imagine we're coming down to fines for these clowns? Uh, I was in that room. Excuse me. I, pardon me. Um, I was in that room. We were shocked at the selfishness, the political division that has nothing to do with a pandemic. We were literally in a secure location for four hours, a closed room. And they were asked, the, the, the um, house physician was in the room with us. They were asked to put on masks and instead they scoffed. That is such a reflection on them. And of course, now we have at least three members infected. Where this film's being shot is exactly where I was standing with Susan Wilde, exactly where I was. And these guys uh, are so self-centered. I thought being in politics and, and serving others was actually about somebody other than me. I, this nonsense with the mask, which is ultimately deadly, is based in ignorance and selfishness 
and I don't know if a fine meets the moment. I want to ask you about your state. A lot of Donald Trump's lies, which were um, echoed and amplified um, by the likes of Rudy Giuliani and, and the folks that traveled around with him masquerading as a legal team, were focused on what happened in your state. And, and I, I just want to put you on the spot and ask you if you feel safe. No, I don't. No. So how do we protect I, I, you? I was on the secure call last night, the briefing last night about security. And I want to really lift up. We, we heard from the acting uh, chief of the Capitol Police. We heard from the assistant acting chief. We heard from the acting sergeant at arms. I want to lift them up and their members who did their duty against all odds. They were outmanned. And you have to know inside, we didn't see that. I didn't see television for hours. We didn't realize how outmanned they were. So I want to lift them up. But do I feel safe? No. Uh, we have a, a new day. Uh, I, I know that people of goodwill uh, and the, all the agencies, the Secret Service, the National Guard, the M Metropolitan Police, the Capitol Police are doing everything in their power to make sure we are safe. But Wednesday did not have to happen. And we have to get to the bottom of why it happened. Number one, it's the infectious lies, uh, as you point out. Donald Trump is an infection, and impeachment will take out that host of that infection. Uh, the Senate needs to convict, so the host is fully taken out. And then we have to look at who were the other hosts that spewed lies that radicalized people to attack their Congress. Well, there are some of your peers. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, some, some of them are people that you see when you go to work. Is, is it an overstatement to say that they endanger their own colleagues? It seems that that is um, maybe the nicest thing you could say about them these days. I, I am very worried, and I hope uh, that, it's, and sadly, think of the change. Uh, you, you're familiar with walking in and out of the Capitol. Think of the changes that will take place, uh, that my grandchildren won't be able to walk in freely. But now we will have metal detectors as we walk onto the House chamber. That shouldn't be. But now it's necessitated, again, by the ignorance and the selfishness of others. A brand new member of Congress sworn just a few days ago, posting a video uh, so proud of uh, packing her Glock as she walks into the Capitol. Are you kidding me? Do you have any sense of decency and of your oath? So I am worried for my safety. And I hope Capitol Police and every other law enforcement agency that needs to be a part of this assures all who work there. I think of the staff who were put at risk. The journalists, I was up uh, in the uh, gallery with your colleagues. That was disgraceful. Their lives were put at risk first by uh, a radical insurrection incited by the president and people on the floor of the House. And then their lives were put at risk by selfish Republican lawmakers who wouldn't put on a mask. Something's got to be done. We're not safe. I started to ask you what can be done um, in the near term. I mean, are you convinced that steps are being taken to keep uh, members and journalists and staff safe tomorrow and the next day and, and leading up to the um, inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? I am. I am confident we had a briefing. We will have more briefings. I am confident they're doing everything in their power. Uh, and I implore all my colleagues and, and their staff, I, I won't let my staff come in. I don't want them in. I didn't, I made sure they didn't come Wednesday. Uh, but uh, I, I implore everybody to be on the watch for your own safety. Ask for help. I intend to ask for help to make sure that I am safe. Uh, I don't want to endanger my kids or anybody else. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very worried, but I'll do everything in my power to stay safe. I have hope for the future. I, I do want to say that. We have some things in place. We do have elected people in the House, and I believe in the Senate, of goodwill, who will recognize this moment, this historic moment, the darkest day I will remember, I'm certain, in a long, long, long line of, of, of days. Um, but I am certain with a new administration, new leadership in the Senate, and our continued leadership in the House Democratic Caucus, brighter days are ahead. We will tackle the virus of the pandemic, the economic collapse, the social reckoning, and most importantly, we will tackle the virus of lies. 
I can't think of a more urgent mission than um, decontaminating all of the lies that are now been, people have died in the name of those, those lies. Congresswoman Madeline Dean, thank you so much for your candor, for stopping and talking to us today. We're really grateful. Please stay safe. I don't mean Thanks that as a, me. as, a, as a line. Please do.